What's going on guys? Today's video we're going to set up a release version of our app on test flight. So this is only going to work with iOS devices, but what it's going to allow us to do is have a beta version of our app that we can send to anybody so that they can test the app features and give us feedback on the app. So this is basically the first step to deploying your app and really the concepts here to get it onto test flight are the same concepts you'll use when actually deploying your app. The test flight version though is just essentially a beta version of what the app deployed version will be later. What is covered in this video is going to require an Apple developer account. You can set that up in de at developer.apple.com. I'm gonna assume you already have that set up, so I'm not really gonna walk you through that. But now you can head on over to the uh, account dashboard and the first thing we're going to wanna to do is check that we have a bundle ID registered for our app. So if you go to the certificates, IDs, and profiles here, you should be able to see the bundle IDs that you already have set up under the identifiers. This bundle ID here is going to be the bundle ID that's used in Xcode. If we open up our project in Xcode, if you go to the runner tab over here and then click the runner target, you can see what your bundle identifier is on this project. The one I'm using for this current version is travel budget one so if i go back over to here i'm really looking for that travel budget one which is right here if you don't have the bundle id here if it's not showing up you're going to want to go into xcode and change it here and then you'll be able to it'll generate it and save it into your ios account now if you do change your bundle identifier here you're going to need to change stuff in Firebase. You would need to regenerate this Google service info.plist file because that is referencing this bundle identifier. So once you've confirmed that that bundle identifier is there, you can actually go to the App Store Connect. And the App Store Connect is going to be where we actually create our app that's ready for the App Store. Creating it for the App Store is the same thing for test flight. We're gonna to wanna to go to this My Apps here and create a new app. And this is gonna be iOS only. I'll call this Travel Treasury Test because I've actually already set this up for what will be the real version of the app under Travel Treasury. So this is just to demonstrate how to set this up. Primary language is going to be English for me. And this is the primary language of the app. Then. It's going to ask you to choose the bundle ID. This is where you're going to want to make sure you choose the same bundle ID that you have in your Xcode project. So mine was the travel budget one. The SKU is really just any unique value for your, for your app. So I'll just do travel treasury test user access, full access is what we'll go with. And then it's going to hit, and then you want to hit create here. And this is going to create that app in your app store connect. This now here is the dashboard for this app. And there are things that before we deploy the app, we're going to have to add. But what we're interested in in this video is the test flight feature. So getting test flight set up, we're going to need a build to be uploaded. And all that means is we're gonna to have to have a compiled version of the app on this App Store Connect so that we can actually use it to distribute to people through the test flight app. Let's jump back into Xcode so that we can get that build set up. We're going to want to review a few settings real quick. The version and the build number. Since this is the first time we're, we're actually building a version of this, you can just leave these as what they are. But do note that once you build a version of the app, the next time you build it, you do need to increase this build number or change the version number because you can't have the same exact build numbers on App Store Connect. This all looks good. I changed my device orientation to be only portrait. So this will fix some issues with turning the screen. One thing to note, if you are using AdMob at all, you do wanna make sure you have your proper AdMob ID set up. During development, you're normally gonna to wanna to use those test ad unit IDs, but we are going to basically be prepping this to deploy right now. So you wanna actually make sure you switch back to your actual ad unit IDs. For me, I'm just gonna leave the test ones because this is not actually gonna be my production app. But if you're doing this, you're probably gonna to wanna to switch these to be the actual production ad unit IDs. So back in Xcode, we're going to be creating a build archive. And all that means is 
it's going to be a compiled version of this app that can run on really any iOS device or iPhone device for that matter. So normally when you run through Xcode, when you run the app through Xcode, you're going to choose the device you want to run. But in this case, we want to build this any iOS device, which is just going to be a compiled generic version of this build that then can be used on essentially any of these devices. And that's important because when this goes on the app store, it needs to be able to work on any of these iPhones. So once that's selected, you're going to up in the top navigation here, click on the product and then click archive. This is actually going to be creating a version now of that build and archiving it to your Apple account based on your Apple ID. And this is the same account that you'll be using in your app store connect. So it's actually going to allow you to send it directly from Xcode to that App Store Connect setup that we need. Uh, one other thing to note, and this is pretty obvious, but if you go under the signing and capabilities, this is where you'll want to make sure you're logged in as that same account as the account that you're using for App Store Connect. So you can see the team is just my name, and that's because my account is a personal account. It's not a company account. That's essentially the setup you're going to want on this on this screen as well. And we are gonna want automatically managed signing. Now, this is probably already how it looks for you. So the signing certificate should already be set up under your Apple developer account, but it's possible if this is a newer account that you just created, you might need to potentially re-log in right here. So once that build succeeds, you're going to see this new window pop up and it will have the version of your app and the builds number right there. And it should also have the app set up right up here. You can see it is that bundle ID that we were using. So the next thing you wanna do is validate the app. And this is just gonna check that everything in that build is correct and is going to work when it is distributed to the app store. Click next on this. And we're gonna keep the automatically managed signing. And once you get to this page, it kind of gives you an overview of everything and you can just click validate there. Now it'll actually do the validating. Okay, that does take a bit of time, but you'll get to this page where it says the app has been successfully validated. So we can hit done on that. And then we're gonna click distribute app and we're gonna be distributing it to the App Store Connect. So click next there and then we will upload it. Uploading this will actually send the build directly to the App Store Connect and there's nothing you need to do. It'll just show up there. And you can hit next there and next again. This is basically doing the validation again, but you do know it's valid so it will work. So it's gonna run through a couple things here. And now you'll get to this page again with the summary and it will say upload this time. So click that and it will take a bit more time to actually upload that. All right, and then you should get to this page where it says that it was successfully uploaded. All right, so even though that said it was successful, don't worry that it isn't quite in the App Store Connect yet. It normally takes uh, it definitely, it normally takes a bit of time. So it could take up to like an hour for it to actually show up here. Normally it's a little bit quicker than that, probably five to 10 minutes and it normally shows up. You should also get an email that this was submitted and that it is pending approval. This issue here that comes up, which is saying that the, that it's missing a push notification entitlement. This will happen and you can ignore it if you aren't using actual push notifications. In the app that I have here, I don't have push notifications set up. So this, this error slash warning is not actually relevant to my current app, but if you are getting this and you are trying to set up push notifications from an external source, then you are gonna need to fix this. While we're waiting for that, I'll show you how to add other users' email addresses so that they can get invites to this beta version of the app. You can see over here on the left-hand side, we have the internal groups, and the internal group right now is really just going to be the account that we are on. So you can add testers to this, but the testers are really just going to be, it's, your only options here are going to be the accounts that are associated with your App Store Connect account. So if you have a company account, you could potentially have more users here. But for me, it's just going to be mine. You're going to be able to test this without having Apple reviewing your build. So you'll be able to get a test version a lot quicker. Now, external groups are really anyone else that you want to send this beta version to and have them test it. So this is something you're most likely going to want to do and probably the point of doing your test flight beta in the first place. 
So you can create a new external group and we can call this, you know, beta testers, or you can call it whatever you like. And then down here, you can add some testers. So you can see there's a couple different options. You can add testers. If you have a whole CSV and you wanna import a bunch of testers, you can do that. Uh, I'll just add a new tester and I'll use my one man startup email for this. And then I'll just put my name and we can add there. So that looks good. Uh, our build is still not available here. So we're still gonna need to wait for that. You'll notice over here on the test information, there is a warning sign. So go ahead and complete all of this information here. It is going to be required because this beta app review information is information that Apple is going to use to verify your build. So Apple does check these builds that you're submitting. And all right, and I did just get an email saying that the App Store Connect build has been complete. So if we go back into our beta testers here for the external group. You can now add a build here and probably we're just gonna need to refresh this page because it should be available now. We click add a build and there is that build that we just created. So we're getting a warning of missing compliance. So hit cancel on this and go to the app store up here. And I believe we just need to select the build right here and then hit done. Now it's gonna ask you if your app uses encryption. My app does not really use encryption. I don't know, there's different ways you can answer this. I'm gonna hit no for now. Uh, you'll see there's a lot more you can read about it here. There is some legal stuff as well to read right there, but I'm just gonna hit no and click done on that for now. Uh, now the app is set up on our main app store tab so if we go back to test flight we should be able to add that you can see we have this one ready to submit so if we go to our beta testers and add a build here we should be able to click that and hit next and then this is just at this is just a note you can leave to the actual beta testers that will tell them what you want to test so the basic setup of v1 test and submitting that for review. This will actually take a little bit of time as well to be reviewed by Apple again, but once that is reviewed by Apple, you should get an email, or all these all these testers should get an email automatically. If you want to test it yourself, you can go to the internal users, and then this is already set up here, so now I'll show you on my phone what this looks like. All right, so you should get an email from Apple again, and this email is going to be saying that you are invited to test the app. This is the same email that the beta testers group will get. So you're gonna click view in test flight. And if you don't already have test flight, you're gonna to have to install test flight. This is a Apple app that you can just get on the app store. It'll basically show you what app you've been invited to test, which this is all the stuff that we just set up, travel treasury test, and then basic setup v1 tests is what I typed in as that message. So you're gonna click accept there, and then you're gonna click install. And now this is gonna install the app on your actual device here from that build that we sent to Apple. So you can see this is kind of very similar to how you would download an app on the App Store. And really that's what you're doing. You're downloading this through TestFlight, which is basically Apple's version of, uh, of beta testing. So once it's downloaded, you can click open and you'll see you'll get a couple more notes from the developer and it'll give you information about how you can share feedback, which this is useful if someone is using your beta version of your app and they want to give you feedback, which is really the only reason they should be using the app is to kind of test it, give you feedback. They can take screenshots directly in the app and send them to you. Um, but anyway, hit start testing and you'll see right there, you get the app and I'm already logged in because I'm already logged in on my device from when I was testing it before, but typically you, the user would not be logged in when they first download it. All right, great, so now you have your app set up on TestFlight for iOS so you can get all your friends that have iPhones to test the app and get you some feedback on what they like, what they don't like about the app, how usable it is. In the next video, I'll be talking more about getting that feedback and how to use it to your advantage, but that's gonna be it for this one. 
Hope you enjoyed. All right, ciao for now.